Hello fellow builders, Nathan Masters here with Brick System Brothers. And I know I'm a day late to the party, but I'm going to talk about LEGO Art. LEGO Art is the newest theme announced. Um, it kind of was announced by itself, so a lot of emphasis here on just the theme itself. And basically it's like making mosaics out of LEGO. Not exactly a new concept, but definitely a fresh take on the idea and uh, the, the products uh, that are being launched as kind of the main runners, the flagship of the introduction of the line uh, are definitely worth a look. So let's jump over here on Brickset and they've got a pretty good introduction to the line just with some numbers and stuff. Um, products is going to be launched on August 1st, I think September 1st here in the US. Uh, kind of a range of retailers. I know the Iron Man one is going to be like exclusive to the Lego store. I think the other ones get a little more exposure on different markets. Uh, could be considered as a successor to the mosaic sets that have come before. So here's a, a few of those that we've seen. Um, definitely a lot more limited in terms of what the LEGO group was pursuing uh, subject material wise. So what we're seeing is that this is kind of a set aimed at the adults, uh, adult fans of LEGO or maybe even new fans to the market. So we'll talk about that a little more in a couple minutes. But uh, some more numbers here would be, I guess, the piece count looks like we'll be between 2,900 pieces on the lowest one and 3,400 pieces on the highest one. So if you're wondering about pricing, uh, we have the, the the cost as well, which is $120 per set. So that does seem a little high. Let's look at the, at the piece breakdown. For the sets with about 2,900 pieces, so just under 1,000, that works out to about four cents a piece. Um, and a, bench, a pretty standard benchmark for LEGO pricing is $0.10 cents a piece. So that does seem like uh, pretty fair. Uh, these are a little one-by-one one tiles and studs, so definitely smaller pieces. But we have to consider the vast quantity here. There's over 3,000 pieces in most of these sets. So $120 for that many pieces, official LEGO-wise, is not a bad deal. The other thing you want to look at with this pricing is who who is the market here, um, and the market it's kind of been stated in various interviews uh, and stuff like that. There's definitely on the adult side of things the collectors, uh, the people who have that disposable income to kind of um, incorporate their hobby and their interests a little bit more. So I think. They have set this at a little bit of a higher price point. They've made this more of a premium product instead of what we usually see with, uh, what they're usually marketing to adults who would buy something for their kids. Um, and so those sets are usually cheaper. Um, they're priced more in a range where the as the kids get familiar with Lego, they can start buying the sets for themselves. Um, so this is kind of a deviation from that, but it's also kind of a result of LEGO exploring the adult fans that are starting to become more familiar with the company um, and starting to get more involved in that. Uh, so going back to the price, if you go up to the 3,400 pieces one, that's like three and a half cents a piece. So even at that rate, uh, you're not doing too bad part per piece wise. Uh, just for what it is, in terms of like what we're used to with Lego being like playability or minifigures or stuff like that, you can't really bring those markers, those comparisons into this because it's just a different product. And so $120 for these seems reasonable, especially considering the market. We have to consider who the market is here. So there's four main sets being launched with the line, and those are 31197 Marilyn Monroe, 31198 The Beatles. 31199 Iron Man and 31200 Star Wars Sith. And these have kind of been split into main theme lines that could get continued down the road depending on how well this does. The Marilyn Monroe is in the art sub theme, so I think this could see future pieces like the Van Gogh, Starry Night, um, those kind, like comic book stuff. Uh, would really lend itself well to this style, but Marilyn Monroe is a good one to kind of kick off the product. Uh, the Beatles, or is, it's more of a personality or um, iconic figures in history, so we could see other portraits like U.S. presidents, um, 
that kind of thing. Other other music related icons I think would be a good one to follow up the Beatles. So that's kind of introducing the music or personality sub theme. And then Iron Man and Star Wars, uh, the interviews that I've read have both discussed these as kind of their own sub themes. So Iron Man kind of being part of Marvel, we could see other Marvel icons, uh, Thanos, some of the other main characters of Marvel Studios could be coming down the road from this sub theme. And then Star Wars Sith, obviously starting off uh, kind of a sub branch of Star Wars. So maybe we could see the Jedi next. Um, we could see other scenes from movies like Pod Racers um, or classic ships like the A Wing, the X Wing, Y Wing, stuff like that. Uh, I think what you have to look for if you're trying to think about what products would fit good in this style is uh, just limiting the number of colors needed to reproduce it and then also like scaling that down to this pixelated version of the art and still maintaining that being recognizable. Uh, and something that Lego was saying in their interviews, like this one from Brickset, was their starting point was kind of this 48 by 48 studs. So just to ensure that there was enough detail there to recognize something, they did have to start with that kind of baseline size. If you multiply that out, you get 48 squared, that's 2,304 studs per picture, and that's a fixed number. So the piece counts that we're seeing um, are a result of the extra pieces being included to make alternate versions of the picture frames, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, you buy one $120 set, you can make these three different designs. In the case of the Star Wars one, it's Darth Maul, Darth Vader, Kylo Ren, who, depending, is not really a Sith, but whatever. Um, and then we can also do that with the Iron Man one. We have three different options for Iron Man. And then when you get to Marilyn Monroe and the Beatles, you actually have four alternates that you could build all in the same set. And so all these extra pieces, I think there's like a thousand extra pieces in the Marilyn Monroe. Once you build one, there's still a thousand pieces left over. You need those to create the alternate designs, uh, which have all been included. And then that way, if you want to build all four, you can buy multiples of the set um, for the Beatles one, you could, I think you definitely need to buy four separate Beatles sets to get all four images. There might be enough extra tiles in the Marilyn Monroe to where you could buy three and then build all four, but not confirmed. Something to look into later when the official inventories are released. Uh, the other interesting difference here is that we have some of the sets using one by one round tiles and other sets are using one by one round studs. And both of these are actually coming to us in several new colors. And if you want to know all the details there, you can just check out this new elementary article. But uh, they were talking a little bit about like why are some of these using studs, why are some using tiles. Um, and I think there's just these subtleties in the texture that you can achieve. Uh, there's just a, a little touch of shadow when you use the studs because of the, um, the texture on there. And then the tiles is definitely more of a flat Art Deco style, uh, kind of a feel to it there. So could be interesting to see if, um, if they do continue this in the future, which ones will be tiles and which ones will be studs. Uh, I think both of them look great. Um, not necessarily, I don't necessarily think one type of piece should be used all the way throughout, but um, I'm sure they've done a lot of product testing and development here to determine which style fits uh, each mosaic best. And was, as a result of that, like I mentioned, we're getting these new colors. So the dark red and dark blue for the stud is actually kind of obscure, and that's coming back now. Uh, and then there's actually completely new colors that we haven't had for, for these one by one round studs. The other new piece that we got is uh, this extra wide brick separator. Some people are calling it the thick separator, so take that as you will. Um, but that's just allowing you to take off four studs at once or six tiles at once. It actually widens at the back here. And this is kind of cool because we see both of our brick separator designs kind of merged into a hybrid one here. Uh, the styling on here is similar to the current orange model that is uh, pretty much in most of creator sets as a, as a spare. It's thrown into a lot of create, creator expert sets and we started seeing it in dark teal 
kind of as an alternate color there. And But then it also goes back to our old style of like the green and dark gray that actually had that widened V shape with that texture on there. So kind of rolling the history of the brick separator together to create this like ultimate collector series brick separator. And one of the comments on bricks that was like, $120 for the new brick separator, I'll take it. So that's a new piece that's interesting, um, especially since it's been included just with this line so far. I think it's really specific to this type of design where you're gonna be, if you wanting to change this picture out every so often, that's gonna involve a lot of popping of plates and tiles off. So thankfully we do have this new design coming to help us with that. Uh, there's these new 16 by 16 base plates or base bricks. They happen to be four plates high, so that's an extra plate thick uh, thickness there than our usual base bricks, kind of like our standard um, thicker pieces. And these actually have Technic connections. This isn't an actual picture of the new ones, but it's kind of a modded up version based on other existing pieces. Uh, so these Technic connections on the side are gonna give it that rigidity, and then it's just kind of a single mold to help with the structure, so. Uh, the other new piece is, we don't have a picture of that yet, that's just a way to mount this on a wall, so I assume it's kind of like uh, maybe like a 4x8 size bracket with two holes in it that you could put over some screws in the wall and just help hang that on the wall, of course being connected to the inside of the frame. Um, some other interesting details here are the signature tiles that you can put in the bottom corner. Now if you don't want to put on a 2x4 tile with the printed signature or logo or whatever. There's enough pieces to cover the whole thing and do it completely smooth without the signature, but it's also nice that LEGO is getting the official branding and licenses to put on this Iron Man. Um, the Marilyn Monroe one has the actual signature for Andy Warhol, so that kind of thing kind of does bring a little interest into the, into the theme. Some more of the new colors here. There's the Andy Warhol one. And then of course the other thing with these is LEGO has decided to launch kind of an immersive build experience here by including the, the audio material. So there's this um, included podcast kind of stylized to go with the build. It's in the form of a QR code that you scan with your phone when you buy the set. It's in the instructions and then you have access to this podcast material that you can listen to while you build. Um, so kind of a focus on like people who want to de-stress after a day of work. Um, again, looking at people who are gonna have the disposable income to buy this and kind of put it up on the wall where it's not really explicitly a Lego product, but when you do look close, it does have the elements of, um, of the Lego company and Lego style. Um, the other thing that's really similar here that we've seen that's interesting is Lego Dots was actually launched last year as kind of a kid's version of this, I guess. Maybe it was even like, you could even consider it to be a pilot program in a way, um, but it's been popular with adults and kids alike. Uh, I think a lot of people have kind of embraced dots from the initial, uh, there was a, kind of some initial hesitation, I think, but it's gotten really popular. We've actually had a second wave of the theme now, so dots is definitely doing well. I could kind of see this as like a sibling product of the Dot family, but it's the more refined, um, more expensive version, uh, specifically targeted at older people, older fans of LEGO, maybe even people who haven't been interested in LEGO at all previously would be uh, introduced to the company with a product like this. I think that's part of the intention. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, this does have a lot of great potential to go other directions. Um, and that's been mentioned in the interviews. So the, the one designer that they interviewed, Samuel Johnson, uh, he's actually worked with ideas for a long time. So he's kind of the guy behind this. Um, I think at least he knows a lot about it. He was able to deliver some information to Brickset and uh, some other fan media groups. but. He said that this is kind of just the start of the product line and we can hopefully see more of these in the future. Uh, I think personally some interesting directions that this could go would be, uh, like I was saying with the art kind of sub theme, would be like Van Gogh, comic books that have already that kind of dot pattern on there. So, you know, you think back to your early Superman and Batman comics, 
Uh, there's already those pastel colors. So even bringing the dots colors into this theme to do that kind of thing. And that's where you could start look, looking at making your own um, versions of these. Uh, it's not that hard with some computer software. Um, here's just an example of using Photoshop to do that. I think this can also be done with, with GIMP. And I might actually try to do this uh, down the road. So I'll put something up here in the corner if that happens. Um, but if nothing shows up, then I didn't pursue that. But, uh, so yeah, we, with our art sub-theme, I think that definitely has potential to go somewhere. The current Marvel sub-theme that's kicked off with Iron Man, like I mentioned, other characters could definitely be pursued. Star Wars is uh, a blank canvas. The other one that I would like to see for Lego art, the style specifically, would be more of a, like a topic sub-theme where you could have something like a skyline design um, really emphasizing the light and the dark there I think that would look really good or even like a national park sub-theme and that is specific to the United States but I think there's enough um, subject matter worldwide that you could do something like Seven Wonders of the World uh, Great Pyramids of Egypt or Great Wall of China kind of finding images or designing images that depict those uh, kind of iconic structures and then bringing that into this pixelated form where it's still recognizable as uh, representing an image or a landmark but kind of bringing it down to this abstract uh, dot image that LEGO is pretty much optimized to produce. So something to consider there for the future products. Um, personally, I don't really have that disposable income to spend on a product like this, although I am pretty interested uh, just to see where it goes. I think what this will be for me is maybe a bit of an inspiration to do my own designs and put those on Rebrickable or something like that, but uh, out of the four, the Iron Man one would probably be my favorite uh, just because I'm a Marvel fan um, and I like what they've done. They actually have have said that the Star Wars ones were based on uh, art that Lucasfilm did specifically for this project. So there's definitely work going both ways on these. Um, they've received the official blessing, I guess, from the Andy Warhol Foundation. And that's kind of where they're getting the material for the podcast as well. They're interviewing people who are associated with these icons, uh, with the Beatles, people that are, have done the research already to kind of bring that experience to the podcast side. Um, and they mentioned those podcasts are 90 minutes, so over an hour of content there while you're building. Um, so yeah, just kind of an, a new interesting direction for LEGO. And this is all stemming from their voyage into the adult market with the 18 plus kind of theme style, I guess. And we looked at, on the channel here, we looked at the adults welcome box and the new packaging that they're putting out uh, to kind of promote these products in their stores um, and I think really what they're trying to do is reach those people that have always seen Lego as a kid's toy and not as something that they would um, just build to kind of relax or build to put on display in their house next to other maybe like modern art style stuff. Um, I'm not really the target audience for that because I don't mind having just classic Lego stuff displayed around. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the sets themselves even though they're targeted at a younger audience um, but I'm definitely a minority I think in that side of things um, and I think that's where the comments on the sites like Brickset and New Elementary and uh, the assembled site from Germany I think that's where we're a little bit biased because we're not exactly the target audience here um, we are the people who are going to find out about it the earliest because Lego's press release is going out to these sites and this is where the adult fans of Lego are, already are, especially since we're online. Um, and so a lot of the people that are saying it's too expensive or it's not interesting, well, you're not exactly the target audience and I think the target audience will have that disposable cash and um, hopefully we'll be interested in this enough to help launch this theme into popularity and yeah, I'm kind of interested to see where it ends up. So, thanks for watching, guys. Brick System Brothers does a lot of different LEGO content. Um, this is specifically an announcement video. I try not to do as many of these, but um, it's a good way to get people interested in our channel and our content. So, 
Uh, one of our original series is called HUTAP. It stands for Hold Up, What's That Awesome Piece. And I just take a look at LEGO pieces individually and what they're capable of, what they can do in the system, that kind of thing. So um, it's one of the favorite things that I produced for our channel. My brother Josh also has some content up. He does a lot of set reviews and uh, looks at that kind of thing. He's got a kind of this mock in progress right now of a spaceport. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And thanks for checking out our channel. See you later.